Hi. This is a lesson in two parts. The first part is going to look at some of the geological background to the South Wales coalfield before you have a go at the questions, which are all on the South Wales coalfield um, worksheet that you've been given. The second part will go through the answers to those activities to see if you can work out um, more about the, the geology of this um, fascinating area. The South Wales coalfield has been um, known about for a very long time. This is an extract of William Smith's first geological map of England and Wales from 1815. You can see the South Wales coalfield, here marked in uh, grey, uh, is already uh, quite well known in terms of its extent and its structure, even where the rest of Wales is a bit of a blank slate, to be honest. If we look at a more modern map, we can see there's more detail on this, particularly in the rocks surrounding the coalfield, but Smith was pretty accurate in terms of the extent and the location of the coal-bearing rocks. In terms of time, the coal-bearing rocks are found in a unit uh, we call the coal measures, which is right at the top of the Carboniferous period. So it's the last um, episode of the Carboniferous uh, before the Permian really kicks in. You have um, a black and white map uh, of the coal field showing you some of the, um, the different parts of the uh, coal measures. Uh, the pennant or the upper coal measures, that's also where we find the pennant sandstone, a really important roadstone resource we've been talking about. Um, and you can see there the outcrop of carboniferous limestone that surrounds uh, the coal field, which is crucial for the development of the iron industry. And also, you know, we see part of the southern uh, outcrop of that around us in the Vale of Glamorgan. We also have a cross-section. That cross-section is from the western end of the coalfield, uh, which you can see marked on your map. If we think about where Britain was in the, at the end of the Carboniferous, we had just crossed the equator, so uh, our climate was going to be equatorial, um, which perhaps led to the, well, which did lead to the uh, coal swamps that um, give us the sedimentary environmental conditions needed for the formation uh, of uh, coal. We also, at this time, were part of an orogenic event. It was happening largely to the south of where we are, but it was still affecting the rocks here. This is the Veriscan orogeny. Uh, the Veriscan orogeny is where Britain really becomes part of Pangaea. The coal field we see as a result does have a distinctive structure, but we can also find variations in the, the rank of coal across the coal field itself. The map that you have here is for one particular coal seam, the five foot coal seam. Um, but it gives us an indication of the distribution of uh, different ranks of coal across the, the coal field itself. The graph that you have, and the graph you'll need to interpret, uh, shows us the different ranks. For your interpretation, um, and completing of the percentage of volatile matter, I want you to look at the um, elemental on analysis on the left-hand side of that graph. Where are the boundaries between the different ranks of coal on that graph? Don't try and read the, uh, the volatiles graph on the right-hand side. It's a bit too vague, that. Stick to that elemental analysis. Okay. That's a bit of background to the, uh, the tasks. All the information should be on the uh, worksheet. It's time to get to work.
I'll see you in the next lesson.